Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5, Episode 14 Thoughts. This episode is called The Devil Complex. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to including this episode, but not for anything that came out after this episode first premiered. That's MCU at least. The episode is rated TV 14, so will this video be Let's Dive Right In. So, yeah, Fitz misses proper English junk food. Very funny. And <laughs> so Gemma goes several wishes before wishing for a pony. I know uh, there's some people who would say that's very hard to believe. I do appreciate that a flying pony is, is her very next wish. Let's see. And... Yeah, um, again, good exploration of, of disability issues with the, you know, Elena trying to deal with the, the arm. And, you know, she wants to push herself further than Mac is okay with. And... Um, yeah, and Deke is like, <laughs> he, yeah, Fitz asks him a question, and, and Deke just stands there staring, because, you know, he's, he's still trying to deal with the fact that he's, you know, yeah, that they're his, his grandparents, and, and you have this thing, you know, I just want you to be okay, you know, because we need your, your brains, and let's see. And and yeah, uh, Daisy suggests a, you know, so, uh, let's see what was the. You know they're gonna figure it out. Have faith, or uh, you know Xanax. Let's see and yeah and and you know. Um, Fitz, you know, slamming the his hand against the the table to get Deke's attention. You know, that's foreshadowing that he is. You know, the when when the doctor shows up, it's not the anomaly. It's you know, basically, yeah, he's he's imagining him. And let's see, yeah, very clever with. Hale's capture it turns out to be a trap. And yeah. Um Ian DeCastacker, fantastic performance as as both Fitz and the Doctor. And let's see. Um hmm. what did I write? Oh right, right. Yeah, the the thing. Uh, yeah, um, the um, yeah. He he tells Leopold, "You're on the right track, but you're not willing to go the whole way." And yeah, Elena, you know, points out, you know, I should have rights. You know, basically, patients' rights, kind of. So yeah, very. Nicely done there, and yeah, um, Hale and and Coulson talking in the interrogation room, you know, and her asserting power, very very cool, and and yeah, to, you know, we we can't move the the driver like a robot or like a statue, Creel, you know, just. She doesn't say Creel just then, but, you know, she knows it. And when she goes up, step out of the car, Creel. And let's see, who, given his current, you know, appearance, could be accurately referred to as Chromedome. And, yeah, you know, he says Hale can be very persuasive and, you know, shows the, the explosives. The teaser made it sound like he was just about to, the, the TV spot teaser, made it sound like he was just about to detonate those when really it was, you know, it was to demonstrate the, yeah, to assert power. It wasn't, he wasn't, 
they were never looking to actually detonate them in, in the actual episode. And yeah, very cool to see Anton Ivanov again. And and yeah, it is the thing, you know, we saw a bunch of different robots that all looked like him before. Why couldn't there be one more? And let's see. Um Yeah, uh very compelling when, you know, Fitzsimmons both try to figure out about the the doctor. I really appreciate and, and yeah, you know, it is consistent with his characterization. He does, you know, the Doctor does believe that he's doing the right thing. And, let's see. Yeah, we see him knock out Daisy. And, yeah, you know, we see, we see later it was him who turned off the the cameras at the at the terminal and and yeah uh, the doctor says you know my experiments got threats off the streets which is of course how certain evil people rationalize their evil deeds and yeah he says he's going to restore her powers which is a legitimately yeah you know because like that you know, devil's advocate, that does make sense for solving their problem. And, you know, on the other hand, it's it's really dangerous for Daisy. And it, you know, if she has her powers back, is that going to be, is that going to threaten the, the uh, what's the word? Uh, earth. You know, a giant place everyone calls the earth. And, um, let's see, yeah, some great moments between Ivanov and, and Coulson. She must really have your bowls in a vice. More like his head in a jar. And, let's see, yeah, and the doctor tells Leopold he's weak. And we have that little moment, you know, Daisy saying, who are you talking to, you know? And, yeah, we see the Doctor isn't actually there. It's, you know, the when, when Gemma was gone for a long time, Fitz imagined seeing her. She was his conscience, and the Doctor is the devil on his shoulder. And let's see. I also, I, I'm not sure I appreciated fully until watching this episode... When he plays the Doctor, Ian DeCastecker really imitates the the um, the speech pattern of the the guy who played his his father, you know. So it really is like the Doctor is very much his father's son, you know, in a way that our Fitz is not. And yeah, and they talk about, you know, maybe it would work. I told you work would work. And, yeah, you know, Daisy says, I'll never forgive you. And he says, I don't think you're alone. And, yeah, she fixes the anomaly using her powers and the little bit of gravitonium. Yeah, I don't, for some reason, I got the idea that that wasn't going to be enough. But I guess it was just without her powers, it wasn't going to be enough. Uh, let's see, the, um, um, yeah, they talk about, you know, whether or not the Doctor is Fitz, whether it's, yeah, and, you know, if this was the right choice, and, and, yeah, you know, Gemma points out we have to make the hard choices to save the world, and that is very true, you know, you have to be careful with this sort of gray area thing. And and yeah, Deke is like, I don't know what to say. And Gemma's like, that's a first. He has a little bit become the punching bag, hasn't he? Like, people are constantly saying mean things to him. You know, I mean, he is trying. In in his defense, he's, he's trying to keep up with all this stuff. And he has been extremely helpful. You know, without him, certain things would not, they would not have gotten to the gravitonium 
on, I already forgot what it was called, um, the Principia in time, if not for him. And let's see, yeah, and, and Deke reveals to, uh, to Gemma that they're related, and then she vomits, which I hope is like morning sickness and not like, Ugh, I can't believe I'm related to Deke Shaw. But yeah, that is a, yeah, and yeah, and he again, you know, he says the thing with, you know, the steps you take thing, and I appreciate, you know, so, some of the things that she, that, that he tells her, the literally no one, you know, there's no way for him to know if he didn't talk to people who knew them very, you know, very well. And, yeah, we end on the reveal of Hale working with Cree. And, yeah, um, I hope this is not the last time we see... I, I recognized his voice immediately, and I was like, is that... You know, yeah, that, um, the, the Cree in this episode that she talks to at the very, very end... Uh, I'm not even, I, I don't know how you pronounce his name, but the actor is Peter Mensa, the messenger from 300. This is madness, you know. And, yeah, um, really, really excited to see what happens next. And, and you know, it's following up on earlier in the episode, we also saw, yeah, Hale is a little bit under pressure. You know, this, I didn't know the timetable was that, so, yeah. And, and yeah, this is the second time Peter Mensa appears in the MCU. He was also in The Incredible Hulk, where he was also great. And, and yeah, uh, IMDb Trivia points out the title is a play on the term God Complex. And yeah, uh, a lot of the best lines are in the memorable quote section for the episode. Let's see. And um, I think that might be about what I have to say. Yeah, the <laughs> I like Elena pointing out after Ghost Rider, there's no way Ada is coming back. And which is too bad. She, you know, um, Ma Mallory Jensen, I want to say was. The actress name, fantastic work, every step of the way. Let's see. Yeah, and I do appreciate the first wish that Gemma has is speak any language. That that is a really really cool. Yeah. You know, if you if you've got the the time, the inclination, and the the. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's not difficult to find the means. There's a bunch of different. You know, just, yeah. You're already online if you're watching this. Just There's a lot of different options for, for learning language. It's it's a, yeah, it's a it's an amazing thing. I'm not that good at it, but the what I know of, of other languages, I, I'm, I'm very grateful, I know. And let's see. Right, and I do appreciate that, you know, Simmons does apologize to, to Deke after snapping at him. And, let's see. Yeah, um, I will do an episode again tomorrow. And, let's see. Right, I also appreciate Hale talking about, you know, the, the, you know, she does what's necessary. Again, something used to, to justify cruelty. It's necessary. And I think that might be, oh yeah, also, yeah, um, are you just another Russian trying to infiltrate our democracy? In yeah, the episode aired in 2018. 
and all you know all the the conversations about Russians, you know, trying to ruin democracy during the the, for example, the presidential election, and you know, still relevant, sadly. And I think that is about. Yeah, also, yeah, the point about, you know, Creel detonating, you know, he and Ivanov will survive, but the others won't. And that was, you know, that is one way to get, you know, yeah, to accomplish what they were trying to just, the, the trap. Very clear, clever. I don't need any bells and whistles, Mac. I just need to be able to punch things.